On today's program, I'm on location here in Jerusalem, Israel, and I'm going to be talking with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's official spokesperson about the threats that Israel's facing. Iran, Turkey, Syria, international pressure like never before. You don't want to miss today on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, a program to help you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and world events surrounding Israel. Speaking of Israel, we're actually on location here in Jerusalem. You know, Israel faces threats every single day. They face threats internally, Hezbollah, Hamas. They face threats externally, Iran, Turkey, Egypt, Syria, and they face immense pressure from the world community to sacrifice their own safety and security by giving away land for supposed peace. I recently talked with Mark Regev. He is the international spokesperson for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and he met with me to discuss the actual concerns that Israel is facing, threats that Israel has to deal with on a daily basis. Here's my interview with Mark. We're here on location in Jerusalem, Israel, and I'm talking with Mark Regev. He's the international spokesperson for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office, and we're talking about the threats that Israel is facing externally, internally, and the immense pressure posed by the world community to give up their security for supposed peace. Okay, let's just jump right into it. Israel's facing tremendous pressure from the international community. Can you talk about that? Look, no one wants peace more than Israel wants peace. Ultimately, it's the Israeli people who are there dealing with the threats. So if it was possible to have a real peace, a durable peace, a secure peace, we would embrace that. What we don't want to see is a, a quick fix that we only pay a higher price for around the corner. But a real peace, Israel wants that and we're eagerly pursuing that. Why do you think the international community seems is putting so much pressure uh, on Israel and not taking into account the, the, the real issues of security? I think Israel has many friends in the international community, people who understand our concerns. And ultimately, and let's be clear here, in the past Israel's pulled out of territory and we've seen ourselves attacked from the very territory that we pulled out of, that we saw in Gaza, that we saw in Lebanon, and we don't want to see that happen again on the West Bank. And let's be clear about that. Israel's ready for a real reconciliation. We're ready for peace. But it has to be a real peace, a peace that, that lasts, a peace that brings a better future for us all, not a quick fix that only comes back to haunt us. Let me jump to the threat that Israel's facing from Iran. And I want you to talk about the P5 plus one deal. You were quoted on CNN as saying that it was a bad deal. Uh, the, the, the sanctions have been loosened. Talk about that. We are very concerned. And let's there be no mistake about it. The Iranian regime seeks nuclear weapons. It's a very aggressive regime, a regime that supports terrorism, a regime that supports the murder going on today in Syria, a regime that oppresses its own people in a very brutal way. We can't allow this one of the most dangerous regimes on the planet to get its hands on the most dangerous weapons, on nuclear weapons. Can you give us a, some inside information on the, on the timeline, y your assessment of, of where Iran is really at right now? Well, the truth is they're too close for comfort. They are building up stockpiles of fissile material, fissile material that ultimately can be turned into the fuel for a nuclear weapon. And they're too close for comfort. Israel will obviously be forced to take action. Uh, is there a great concern about the reaction of the international community to that? Israel would prefer to see a peaceful solution. If it's possible to have a diplomatic solution to the Iranian nuclear problem, we would, of course, be welcome that, welcome that very much. But of course, we're talking about a threat not just to Israel, to the region and to the world. And we can't sit by and allow Iran to becoming a nuclear weapons power. That's unacceptable. We have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Turkey. We'll talk about the Arab Spring. We'll talk about the threats that Israel faces internally. Don't go away.
Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Even more important than the physical relief our medical teams provide, it also opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are actively preparing for our next medical clinic in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to help two impoverished Jewish communities living there, the Beta Abraham and the Beta Israel. Our volunteer medical professionals will be providing a clinic for eye surgery, glasses, dental procedures, and specialized medical treatments, all free of charge to thousands of men, women, and children, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. As we prepare to go, the only question remaining is, how many can we help? Time is of the essence, and your generous gift today can make you a key part of impacting the lives of the precious people of Israel's lost tribes. Will you help? As our special thank you, when you respond with a gift of $40 or more today, we will send you a powerful teaching by Rabbi Jonathan Bernis called A Rabbi Looks at Israel. In this remarkable DVD presentation, captured on location in Israel, Jonathan takes you on a prophetic tour of Israel, revealing the end time significance of numerous key sites. We'll also send you another DVD called Where Are We on God's Prophetic Timeline? Jonathan, along with a panel of the world's foremost prophecy experts, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Jan Markell, Steve Spillman, and the late Jack Kinsella, address events happening today that are fulfilling end times prophecy. You will also learn about what still needs to take place in Israel before Jesus returns, so that you will be prepared for His return. And we also want to send you a little book by Jonathan called, Is Peace Possible? Understanding the Current Middle East Crisis. This book contains a simple guide to help you understand how events unfolding in Israel and the Middle East tie into biblical prophecy. Jonathan addresses the rapidly changing political, economic, and military events to help you understand what you hear in the news. Finally, as an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our Jewish Voice Today magazine. This beautiful bi-monthly magazine brings you timely insights into Israel, Bible prophecy, and the Jewish roots of your faith, as well as teaching and testimonies. To share a gift in support of this desperately needed outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift of $40, $80, $120 or more will help provide life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please respond right now. We're here on location in Jerusalem, Israel, and I'm speaking with Mark Regev. He's the official spokesperson for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and we're talking about the threats that Israel faces on a daily basis. Let's get right back into it. Mark, let me talk a little bit about Syria and the unrest in Syria. Syria is a sworn enemy of Israel, but it was a more stable situation before. Can you talk about the threat that Syria faces right now with the unrest? Unfortunately, we see in Syria a situation that it's not good. It's first of all not good for the sake of the Syrian people. We see an ongoing humanitarian crisis with just so many people killed, many more injured, and of course, maybe more than a million people having to force, force to leave their homes. It's really a terrible humanitarian tragedy. From a security point of view, we see in Syria on one side uh, the terrible Assad regime supported by Iran and Hezbollah, uh, uh, a regime that is ruthless and extreme. They are, I would argue, a terrible regime. On the other side, I'd like to tell you we see a lot of Syrian George Washingtons who want to bring democracy and freedom to Syria, but we also see on the other side, unfortunately, all too many uh, jihadist types, people who, uh, whose agenda is not less radical, not less extreme than that of the Syrian regime. Uh, so it's a problem, Syria. Do you think Assad is the lesser of two evils? I wouldn't say Syria? that because Assad today is 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 in a strong 
coalition with the Iranians and Hezbollah. In fact, many people argue that he's become in many ways a satellite of Iran and Hezbollah. So we have no preference between one sort of radical extremist and another sort of radical extremist. We would like to see the developing Syria of a more moderate, tolerant republic that we could hopefully live in peace with, but we don't see that around the corner, unfortunately. What would it take for Israel to actually intervene in Syria? What we're doing today is to prevent uh, things from having a negative impact on us. Obviously, on a humanitarian side, we're taking in to Israeli hospitals people, Syrian civilians who've been injured in the fighting. But from the point of view of protecting ourselves, obviously we've beefed up security on our northern border. We don't want a situation where the fighting inside Syria spills over into Israel and we have to take the necessary preparations. We've also got a policy in place to make sure that dangerous weapons in Syria don't find their way to terrorist groups in Lebanon, specifically Hezbollah. And there's that attempt to pass updated state-of-the-art weaponry to the terrorists in Lebanon, and we're on record as saying that we won't allow that to happen. Well, it has been happening, though. Uh, Syria has been supplying Hezbollah with weapons, and Israel is, is aware of that. So at what point does, does Israel intervene? Our policy is, is to interject when we can. Let's shift to, to Egypt. We have a peace agreement on paper since President Sadat. But in 2011, September, Israel was forced to evacuate personnel from the embassy. It's a deteriorating situation. Can you talk a little bit about the current situation with Egypt? The peace with Egypt is a fundamental strategic interest, we would argue, of both sides, of both Israel and Egypt. I mean, we fought wars with Egypt in 1948, in 1956, in 1967, and again in 1973. So a, a cold peace with all its difficulties is, is still better than fighting wars. Uh, we want to maintain the peace with Egypt. We're committed to doing so. Mark, we want Christians that are watching the program to, to really understand the threats that Israel is facing both externally and internally. Talk about Hezbollah and the threat that Hezbollah uh, poses to Israel in the north. What, what's the current threat level posed by Hezbollah? Hezbollah is in many ways, uh, I know if you read the newspapers, you think it's a terrorist group in Lebanon. But Hezbollah in many ways is much stronger than the Lebanese state and the Lebanese army. Uh, they have tens of thousands of rockets that are aimed at Israeli cities. Uh, they have rockets today that can go deep into Israel as far south as Tel Aviv and beyond. So if there is another round with Hezbollah, it's not going to be a small little uh, border skirmish. It can be much, much more serious. And Hezbollah is a problem because they're armed to the teeth, they're backed by the Iranians, and they have the ability to deteriorate the whole situation into a very bloody conflict. Now, we're taking preparations. We don't want to see that happen, and if it does happen, we want to be prepared to meet the challenge. But in many ways, that Hezbollah military presence on our northern border is uh, the most immediate challenge uh, on Israel's frontiers. So of all the threats, external and internal, Hezbollah poses the greatest immediate threat? I said it is the most immediate threat on our borders. There are other threats on our borders too. There's Hamas in Gaza and so forth. There are problems of terrorists in Sinai. If you ask what the number one threat of Israel is though, that is unequivocally the desire of the Iranian regime to get a nuclear weapon, because that is the big Absolutely. one. Absolutely. I mean, if you saw Iran achieve nuclear weapons, that changes history. That changes the planet as we know it. And I'd remind you, uh, I'm sure you remember, and don't need reminding, but Israel is only the little Satan. In the crazy, warped ideology of the Iranian regime, we are only the little Satan. The big Satan is the United States. Their words, not mine. And of course, Europe is a middle-sized Satan in their way, you know, world outlook. This is a very radical extremist regime. Unfortunately, there's some in the United States that believe that it's America's support of Israel that actually is causing the terrorist activity against America. It's, it's not true, is it? Of course not. And in fact, it's the opposite is true. Israel and the United States share fundamental values. We're both democratic countries. We're free countries where we uphold a, a tradition of of liberty, of justice, of the rule of law. Fundamental freedoms that many of us take for granted and we should not take them for granted. Uh, the Iranians and the other extremists who hate us, hate us for what we are. 
And we are America and Israel, uh, we represent to them Western democracy. Some of us are quite concerned about Turkey. Israel experienced a very friendly trade relationship with Turkey for many years. That's deteriorated somewhat. Can you give us an update on Turkey? Well, the, 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 the strange situation is the trade relationship seems to be going okay and the political relationship is the one that's suffering. Look, Israel and Turkey have had a very good relationship, as you said, for years. And over the last recent period, we've seen a downward trend. That's not because we wanted it. And we would hope that we can overcome the current obstacles and have a better relationship with Turkey. I hope it's possible. It's not just dependent on our decision. It'll require a parallel decision in Ankara. Mark, one final question. There's millions of evangelical Christians around the world that love Israel and stand with Israel. What's, is Israel aware of that? What's Israel's response to evangelical Christians that really believe that this is a land that God has ordained for the Jewish people and because of their faith really pray for Israel and stand with Israel? We very much appreciate their support. Let me be unequivocal about that. We appreciate the support for Israel and I invite all Christians who have not yet visited the Holy Land to come and visit our country. We're a small country. We're the size of Wales or New Jersey, but there's a lot to see here. I mean, in a very small geographical area, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of the heritage of the Western world is here and beyond. From archeology span to holy sites, the Sea of Galilee, the River of Jordan. Come here and see us with your own eyes. There's no substitute for that. We will, we will. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. I want to thank Mark Regev for taking time out of his busy schedule to tell us a little bit about the threats that Israel's facing on a daily basis and the immense pressure from the international community and a reminder that we need to be praying for Israel on a daily basis. Israel knows that Christians like you are praying for them and supporting them and it makes all the difference in the world. So thank you on behalf of the nation of Israel and don't forget to pray daily for Israel, for the peace of Jerusalem. Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One way we do this is by providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Even more important than the physical relief our medical teams provide, it also opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are actively preparing for our next medical clinic in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to help two impoverished Jewish communities living there, the Beta Abraham and the Beta Israel. Our volunteer medical professionals will be providing a clinic for eye surgery, glasses, dental procedures, and specialized medical treatments, all free of charge to thousands of men, women, and children, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. As we prepare to go, the only question remaining is, how many can we help? Time is of the essence, and your generous gift today can make you a key part of impacting the lives of the precious people of Israel's lost tribes. Will you help? As our special thank you, when you respond with a gift of $40 or more today, we will send you a powerful teaching by Rabbi Jonathan Bernis called A Rabbi Looks at Israel. In this remarkable DVD presentation, captured on location in Israel, Jonathan takes you on a prophetic tour of Israel, revealing the end time significance of numerous key sites. We'll also send you another DVD called Where Are We on God's Prophetic Timeline? Jonathan, along with a panel of the world's foremost prophecy experts, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Jan Markell, Steve Spillman, and the late Jack Kinsella, address events happening today that are fulfilling end times prophecy. You will also learn about what still needs to take place in Israel before Jesus returns, so that you will be prepared for His return. And we also want to send you a little book by Jonathan called, Is Peace Possible? Understanding the Current Middle East Crisis. This book contains a simple guide to help you understand how events unfolding in Israel and the Middle East tie into biblical prophecy. Jonathan addresses the rapidly changing political, economic, and military events to help you understand what you hear in the news. Finally, as an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our Jewish Voice Today magazine, 
This beautiful bi-monthly magazine brings you timely insights into Israel, Bible prophecy, and the Jewish roots of your faith, as well as teaching and testimonies. Please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift of $40, $80, $120 or more will help provide life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please respond right now. I'm standing on the slope of the Mount of Olives. It's one of the most beautiful and important sites in all of Jerusalem for three reasons. First of all, it was from the Mount of Olives that Jesus came to Jerusalem near the end of his ministry to give him his life force as a sacrifice. It's also the place that he ascended to heaven from after the resurrection. And probably most importantly, it's the place that he's going to return to. I don't know if it's this exact spot, but somewhere on the slope of the Mount of Olives. And you can see behind me the old city of Jerusalem. It's absolutely magnificent. You see the ancient wall of Jerusalem. Right behind me, this road that leads up to the small gate, that's the lion's gate or the sheep's gate. That's the actual gate in the time of Jesus was below it that Jesus went through in those final moments of his life. He was led through this gate and we have what's called the Via Del Rosa, the way of the cross. And then of course the iconic Temple Mount and you see the Dome of the Rock up there built in the sixth century. And in front of it, another gate, a double gate that's actually been blocked and in front of it, a cemetery. That's the Golden Gate or the Eastern Gate. It's been blocked uh, because the Muslims were very much aware that the Messiah would come from the East, would come from the Mount of Olives and would go through that gate. And so they thought if we block this gate, we'll keep the Messiah from coming and uh, our rule will continue. Of course, they'll fail. That real estate is probably the most contested real estate on planet Earth. It's a symbol of the tension, of the conflict that exists here in this land. And really, it's a spiritual battle. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You know, Israel faces threats on a daily basis, both external from Iran, from Syria, from Egypt immense world pressure, but also tensions from within, the internal fight over this land. And that's symbolized by the Temple Mount so very clearly. As believers, we have to stand uh, with Israel. And, and there's, there's several reasons why it's important. Let me just give you two of them. First of all, as Bible believers, as those that believe that this is the Word of God, we need to believe the whole book. We can't pick and choose. But if we believe that this is God's word, we have to take God at his word. And God makes it very clear in scripture that this land belongs to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Genesis chapter 15, he makes a covenant with Abraham. We call this the Abrahamic covenant. And he says this in Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. He says, on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said to your descendants, I give this land, and he actually gives us the geography from the river of Egypt to the great river of, of Euphrates. So that's a much bigger area than it currently exists today when we look at the state of Israel. It was much larger, but clearly God says, I will give this land to you, Abram, and to your physical descendants. And then again in Genesis chapter 17, God repeats this promise to Abram. He says in verse 8 of chapter 17, the whole land of Canaan where you are now an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. So if we're Bible believers, if we believe that this is the word of God, we must understand that God has given this land to the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not because he loves them any more than he loves the Palestinians or the Arabs. It's simply God has decreed in his word this land it will belong to the children of Abraham. How long? For eternity. It's an everlasting possession. So this is God's decision. We, we, who are we to take issue with God? So if we're Bible believers, we simply have to accept God and his word that there's a divine land grant given to the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, some would argue that's only uh, applicable if they are under the covenant, and if they're following the Lord and they're away from God now, they're secular, they've rejected God. But see, God's covenants are not dependent on us. If they were dependent on us, 
what, what would we stand on? The, the new covenant is based on the, the grace of God, just as the Abrahamic covenant and the covenants that follow. And so this is a covenant that God makes a decree with himself that this is an everlasting possession. So it's not about uh, loving one people more than the other. It's about a divine decree. And then secondly, Genesis 12, where God says this, I will bless those that bless you and your descendants and curse the one that curses you. I want to be blessed by God, and I know you do too. And so if we want to be blessed by God, we need to stand on the Word of God. We need to be in agreement with God. And he says, I will bless those that bless the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in the midst of terrible threats that Israel's facing, we as Bible believers need to stand with this tiny nation. It doesn't mean that everything that Israel does is right, but we understand that this is a divine decree that this land belongs to it, the Jewish people. We're standing with them in prayer. We're standing with them uh, po politically and uh, because we believe the Word of God. So I want to encourage you, as I always do on every program, to pray daily for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Coming this summer, July 5th through July 12th, join Jonathan Burnus and his family on a spectacular seven-day cruise to Alaska. You'll experience beautiful scenery, worship and musical performances by concert violinist Maurice Glar and modern-day psalmist Marty Getz. There'll also be great fellowship, as well as teachings by Jonathan Burnus on the Jewish roots of our faith and special guest Mark Bilt, who's a recognized authority on the blood moons phenomenon please check our website at www.jewishvoice.org for updates. To register now, call Jabez Travel at 1-888-435-3787, email lisa at allchristiancruises.com, or visit our website. The cruise is departing from Vancouver, British Columbia, and it's a voyage you won't want to miss. Be sure to join us in beautiful Alaska. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has been dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus is the Messiah to the Jew first and also to the nations. Now, one way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the entire world. We've been able to demonstrate God's love by providing these people with medical care, dental care, eye care, eyeglasses, even eye surgery, all completely free of charge. But most importantly, we share the gospel with them. And we have seen tens of thousands of Jewish people and others come to faith in Jesus as their Messiah and Savior. We are making a difference in their lives through the support of people like you. Hey, by the way, we're on Facebook. You can check us out by going to facebook.com slash Jewish Voice. We'd really like you to befriend us. You can check the like button and you can be updated on all of the things happening here in the ministry because you are part of this ministry. Well, we're out of time once again from the beautiful slope of the Mount of Olives here in Jerusalem. I want to remind you, as I always do, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now more than ever, they need our prayers. Till next week, this is Jonathan Burnus saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 